Developing a successful cropping system must fulfill the needs and functions of your farm to produce the quantity and quality of forages that meet the majority of nutrient and dry matter requirements of your livestock. You can achieve these by growing any number of combinations of perennial and annual forage crops that will benefit animal productivity and health, soil health, environmental health, and farm profitability. In this video, we'll take a close look at summer annual forages. These forages can be important complements to both pasture and stored feed. Summer annuals can be grown in the heat of the summer and help overcome low productivity periods during the summer slump. In addition, they can provide a high yield and quality feed source for the winter months. Growing summer annuals is a, a way that farmers can grow a high biomass forage in the middle of the summer and this forage can be used for grazing or it can be used for stored feed production um, as haylage primarily or baleage. Uh, it's very wet material so it's hard to make dry hay out of. You can see over here that when it's mowed it's extremely wet usually about 85 to 86 percent moisture which would make it very very hard to dry for hay. So this forage is primarily used for grazing in the summer months, July and August, or for making um, baleage or haylage. There are lots of different kinds of summer annuals that can be grown in the Northeast and actually around the country. One of those is a sorghum sedan grass. This is an example of a sorghum sedan grass, which is sorghum crossed with sudan grass. Um, the benefit of having a cross is that it produces a high yielding uh, forage crop. It usually yields higher than both sorghum and sudan grass if they were grown separately. Sorghum sudan grass is uh, good for both haylage and can also be grazed. Its regrowth potential is high, which means you can either uh, make multiple cuts of forage or also graze it multiple times. Sorghum sedan grass is uh, drought tolerant and it also does well under very fertile and well drained conditions. Sudan grass is a warm season annual again. You can um, compare it to a sorghum which is right next to it. This is forage sorghum and you can see that sudan grass has much finer leaves and much finer stems than a forage sorghum. This is forage sorghum, this is sedan grass. Sudan grass works really well for grazing because it has much finer stems and, and much finer leaves, so it's easier for the cows to graze versus a forage sorghum. Sudan grass, it works well under a multi-cut or multi-grazing system because it has good regrowth potential, which means that you can graze it or cut it and that it'll come back to be grazed or harvested again. Forage sorghum, that you can see here really works best in a one cut system where you harvest it once uh, for forage and and then it doesn't grow back. It, it's usually harvested in the soft dough stage which is similar to where you would harvest silage corn. Um, but it can also be used in a multi-cut system but its wreath growth potential is quite a bit less. One benefit to growing forage sorghum to the soft dough stage for an organic producer would be that uh, the soft dough stage of forage, forage sorghum would have very similar quality to corn silage um, and very similar yields. Of course, uh, the benefit for an organic producer is that you actually drill forage sorghum at a, a quite a bit higher seeding rate than corn silage so that you probably wouldn't have the same weed pressures as you do in corn. You wouldn't have to go in and cultivate, um, but you'd still have, get the same quality. So that's potentially a benefit for organic producers. Forage sorghums, sorghum sudan grasses and sudan grasses um, can come with the BMR trait. BMR stands for brown midrib. And if you get up close to the leaves, you can actually see the brown midrib of these leaves. This is characteristic of brown midrib varieties. The benefit of having a brown midrib variety is that it is low lignin, which means that it's a high digestible feed. There's not a lot of lignin, so the cows can intake more of this material and digest more of the forage, um, incorporating the nutrients for feed or for milk 
or uh, biomass of the body. So it's a highly digestible feed, more digestible usually than uh, just a sedan grass without the BMR trait. When you're harvesting or grazing the sedan grasses or the sorghum sedan grasses, you really need to harvest them at the f down to about five to seven inches. You need to leave plenty of material for them to regrow. If you cut or uh, mow or graze the sorghums or sedan grasses and even the millets or the summer annual, other summer annuals too low, they'll have a difficulty growing back and so you may lose production. So just remember to not, to not mow them as low as you would a perennial forage. Five to seven inches of material for regrowth potential. If you mow the material too low to the ground, it'll have difficulty regrowing and your yields in the next harvest will be significantly lower. One major concern with um, sorghum especially, also with sudan grass and sorghum sudan grass crosses, is that they have a compound in them called prusic acid. And if they're grazed, or grazed especially when they're too short, the prusic acid content is very high. As the plant begins to grow, the prusic acid con uh, concentration is diluted by the amount of biomass that's present. So it's very important not to graze the crop really any lower than 30 inches um, or 24 inches, between 24 and 30 inches for grazing the sorghum, the sudan grass, and the sorghum sudan grass crosses. When harvesting for stored feed, really the best time to harvest is right around 36 inches, which gives you an, a, a high amount of biomass. It reduces the prusic acid content, and then the regrowth um, should come back on and produce another crop of the same yield and quality for a second harvest. When harvesting summer annuals with the sorghum, the sorghum sedan grasses, or the sedan grasses themselves, you really should harvest them um, when they reach about 36 inches in height. You can see this crop is approximately 36 inches. That's the best time really to harvest for stored feed. This is a summer annual called Tef. You can see that Tef is a much lower growing uh, summer annual than the sorghums or the sedan grasses. It has much finer leaves, um, but high biomass. This is an excellent forage for stored feed or for haying. Um, there hasn't been a lot of research done on Tef yet in the United States, but the little research that has been conducted shows that it's an excellent high quality stored feed, but it's a little bit difficult to um, use this under a grazing system because oftentimes it gets pulled out easily by its roots and then it, it, the regrowth, regrowth potential isn't good under grazing. This is a, a summer annual mix which is a, a pearl millet mixed with a, a forage brassica and the goal of mixing these two species is to improve the overall forage quality of the blend. The forage brassica adds a high energy, high protein feed to the millet which is also a decent protein but um, also has a lot of fiber. So by adding the brassica, you reduce uh, the amount of fiber in the, in the overall blend, increasing digestibility. Forage millet or um, pearl millet is also a great summer annual. You can see it's much lower growing again than the sorghums or sedan grasses and also much leafier with finer um, stems and leaves, making it really good for grazing um, and also for forage stored feed production. It's a little bit deceiving when you look at the sorghums or the sedan grasses and see how tall and how much biomass is there. And you look at the millets and you often think that they'll be lower yielding. But in actuality, the forage millets, the, um, uh, such as pearl millet, can yield just as high as the sedan grasses or the sorghum sedan grasses. The nice thing about millet is that it can grow under more adverse conditions than the sorghums and the sorghum sedan grasses. It can grow under a slightly lower pH and also in slightly wetter soils. The millets do not contain prusic acid um, and generally uh, that's not a problem for this crop.